All right, guys, so we've seen all types of cringe, woke celebrations, ads, commercials, uh, virtue signaling. We've seen all types of stuff for Pride Month that woke corp America, the Democrat Party, and the far left is pushing on this country, okay? It is nauseating, right, to see all the shenanigans that they put out, okay? Uh, again, there, there are some companies that are really ratcheting it up um you know the pride you know virtue signaling i mean look at the postmates ad okay that came out basically promoting what they call a bottom friendly menu right basically foods that are supposed to be good for um cleaning out your digestive system so you can participate in um certain sexual activities that you know involve holes that aren't supposed to be penetrated right uh but when that being said yeah, um, you thought that that would probably be the worst of it, but I, I think what is actually worse than that is a network that is supposed to be a more conservative-leaning, right-leaning network openly promoting a transgender teenager, okay, in a family that has basically endorsed and accepted the fact that their daughter uh, wants to transition into a boy, okay uh now fox news again they are openly promoting this okay it's something to celebrate and they're basically also telling people who aren't celebrating this that hey you're closed-minded and you know you low-key uh might not necessarily understand this issue right that's why you don't agree with it because you don't understand it right you're ignorant okay that, that's low-key kind of what they're saying here at the end and i guess this is just a reminder that people got to understand that fox news uh regardless of how they advertise themselves um, they are based in New York City, right? And a lot of people that work for that network are from New York City. And New York City, again, is one of the most liberal cities in this country. And I think that this story right here is a reminder of how Fox News is run by people who live in a liberal city, right? So I'm not surprised that Fox News is running this, but they're going to get a whole lot of backlash for this because, again, this is just openly celebrating something that, Again, there's a whole lot of people in this country right now, particularly on the right, are, are not really trying to get on board with, okay? But they're doing this for, for Pride Month, okay? Uh, so without further ado, I, I want to react to uh, this. So let's get into it. Only walking down the street, you wouldn't think anything different. 14-year-old Ryland Whittington is a typical Southern California teenager. Weird, <laughs> right? Is that a typical Southern California teenager? Weird. <laughs> And the Whittingtons, along with mom Hillary, dad Jeff, and sister Brinley, are a typical family. The only difference, though, in Ryland's eyes, is what this family can mean to the tens of thousands of kids under 18 who identify as transgender. We put our story out there so people could see that like, there's another family out there that is going through what we're going through, or there's another family who's proud of who they are. Before Ryland could even speak, he managed to tell his parents that he is a boy. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Just full-throated endorsement here from Fox News. Okay, you're really bonding to this nonsense that before a child can speak, they are capable of telling their parents that, hey, I'm not actually a girl. I'm a boy. Again, how many times have y'all heard these stories, guys? How many times? I I'm starting to think... <laughs> That these stories are made up. They have to be. How many times you hear the same story? Well, my child was two years old. They couldn't speak, but they could tell me that um, they were not the right gender. <laughs> Fox News is bought into it. Okay? They're bought into it. Using the, uh, the preferred pronouns and all. When this girl, uh, obviously, obviously, it's probably having some mental issues. Probably having some mental health issues. Um, and, and probably needs to, you know, lay on somebody's couch and to, you know, discuss some things that they may or may not be going through. I don't buy for a second that this young girl uh, at the age of two or three years old uh, was able to communicate with her parents that, hey, I, I don't think I'm actually a girl. I, I think I'm actually a boy. I don't believe that. I could just see it. It wasn't him trying to be a brat it was like painful it was truly painful for him to have to wear feminine clothing and and for us constantly telling him that you're a girl 
And yeah, that's that does not mean that they're transgender. I'm sorry. Again, th you see this over and over again. It's the same thing. Well, this kid, this child, is displaying characteristics that we typically associate with the opposite sex. Therefore, they're, they're transgender, <laughs> right? Again, th this is what is being pushed from the left and the war revolutionaries this is what's being pushed in classrooms this is what they're trying to do to kids now and this is why you have so many kids that are identifying as lgbtq or transgender or whatever non-binary because they're literally telling kids that if you have any characteristics that don't fit what we traditionally assign to genders right the, the traditional gender roles that automatically means that you have to be transgender that is what is being told to kids and, and that is what's happening in the situation right here okay so what if uh this girl doesn't want to wear a dress or doesn't want to wear their hair in certain ways that, you know, girls typically wear their hair. That doesn't mean that they're a boy. That doesn't mean they have gender dysphoria. That What it means is that they just don't like wearing dresses, right? They don't like wearing their hairstyles in ways that uh, girls traditionally wear their hair. And you know what we call them? We call them tomboys, right? Again, we had this problem figured out a long time ago. We've already dealt with girls who display more masculine characteristics tomboys we weren't telling them that they were actually really boys we were just saying that, yeah you're a girl to act like a boy but you're still a girl <laughs> right that that is what we're telling them again now all of a sudden tomboy doesn't exist anymore it's not a thing it's you're non-binary or you're full-on trans unlike some trans kids when rylan came out at age five a few years later <laughs> came out at age five <laughs> came out at age five this young girl was able to comprehend the idea that they were born in the wrong body right that they have the wrong genitalia okay that they have a you know boy's brain in a girl's body right it, that's what you're trying to tell me at five years old before they even hit puberty okay uh before they're even exposed to sex or what sex is or any of that stuff no 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 I'm telling you, as a five-year-old, right, I'm in fact not a girl, I'm a boy, okay? And if you don't listen to me, then you're a bigot, right? You're a trans folk, okay? They're fully capable of understanding what being transgender is at five years old, okay? Five-year-olds who routinely claim that they're things that they're not, okay? If this five-year-old came out and said, hey, you know, I'm a doorknob, <laughs> right or whatever right i'm a dog i'm a cat whatever again things that five-year-olds say routinely um parents right sensible people would say no you're not but if a five-year-old comes out and tell you that hey you know i'm, I'm not actually really my sex um <laughs> then you know for whatever reason that is legitimized i i don't understand i don't get it he had the full support of his parents Initially, there was some pushback from us in yeah. trying to understand this. We were confused like most people are. We thought that gender and sexuality were the same thing. It took us a while to figure out that those two things are different and that children actually do recognize their gender identity very young. Some of them, not all. But they listened to Rylan and to Hillary's conservative faith. For me, it's just a deep spiritual belief that you believe in God and he, you know, created us the way he wanted us. Well, then, yes, he created Rylan just the way he is. And no, no, that's, <laughs> that's not how that works. OK, no, no, no. If you believe it, 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 in God, you're basically saying that God made a mistake. What you're saying is that no, God actually messed my daughter up. That's, that's what you're saying, because you're saying that your daughter actually should have been born a boy. That, that is what you're saying. OK, so you can't reconcile those two things. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, that's not how it works. Um, at the end of the day, if you truly believe that your daughter is a boy, right, that she was born in the wrong body, then you're basically saying that God made a mistake. That, that's what you're saying. OK, because otherwise um, your daughter would have been born a boy. <laughs> right. Again, those two things aren't compatible. So you can't sit and say, well, I'm using my Christian faith to justify this when it, that's just not justifiable, right? It's just, it is what it is. And they listened to families. They met in support groups. There was a father who was sitting across the table. He says, you have no idea how lucky you are to be here, which kind of took me back. I didn't at that point consider myself lucky to be there. And he said, you know, our, our child had displayed this gender dysphoria or this gender misalignment at, at, at the same age that Rylan has. And we didn't listen. And we pushed back. 
That pushback led that child to turn to self-harm as a teenager, which 60% of trans and non-binary kids engage in, according to the Trevor Project. More than 50% consider suicide. That, okay, so here's the thing. This is like the, the kind of messed up part about what's going on. They use these statistics, right, about how, well, you know, trans kids, you know, you know, attempt suicides at higher rates than the rest of the population, blah, 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 to guilt trip parents and people into accepting this stuff with no evidence whatsoever that transitioning a child is actually going to fix the underlying problems that these kids are having. And this is why you're actually doing a disservice to these kids when you don't treat this as a mental health issue, when you just full on accept it with no evidence that acceptance is actually going to cure that problem. Because there was a study uh, done by a, a Swedish uh, institute that basically showed that even after transition, um, trans people are 19 times more likely to commit suicide. So the problem is not going to be solved with transitioning it's not gonna be solved with puberty blockers it's not gonna be solved with surgery it's not gonna be solved with that there are underlying issues other issues going on that may be contributing to the fact that these you know kids or these people that you know identify as trans or whatever um you know want to commit suicide they may be depressed they may have anxiety they may have other issues going on that could be contributing to that and it, it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with well, I, I'm just in a boy. I was just born in the wrong body, right? That might not necessarily be it. But see, they don't want to talk about that. What they want to do is they want to guilt trip parents like these parents right here who listen to everybody except <laughs> their faith, right? Uh, these parents, they want to get tripped and say, well, if you don't accept your child for who they are, then you will be responsible if your child happens to harm themselves. Instead of saying, no, 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 you should actually get your, your child some mental help, have them lay on somebody's couch, and to really get a professional to help out with this issue before trying to transition your kid. Because transitioning is not necessarily going to help them with their problem, right? Now, again, if you do all that and you still want to transition to 18 years old, when you become an adult, fine. I have no issues with that. Do what you want to do. But this right here, in my opinion, is a father that has failed. He has failed to do everything he can do to stop his child from potentially undergoing life altering and life changing permanent procedures that their child probably is going to end up regretting in the future right evidenced by the fact that from detransitioners in their testimony um it takes about eight years or so for them to realize that oh i miss my penis right oh i miss my breast oh i miss these parts of my body that i decided to cut off uh, at an age in which i really didn't understand right and that transitioning actually did not really help me with my underlining problems for me was the turning point i didn't want to see rylan to go through that i'd rather have a living son than a dead daughter i guarantee that if we had pushed back and done what a lot of parents do i don't think that we would have either one of the kids that you see before you here today you don't know that right you don't know that again you got guilt tripped into doing this into letting your daughter and other people tell you what your daughter's supposed to be instead of you standing up on your principles and your beliefs and trying to get your daughter the help that she needs uh, to make sure that this is something that she actually wants to do. Allowing him to, to live authentically and true to himself and be who he really feels like he is. When you get to know Rylan, you see just how proud and confident he is of himself. Ryland's story got international attention in 2014 when a family YouTube video went viral. And Hillary has since written a book called Raising Ryland. So again, like a whole lot of these parents you're saying, the ones that, that share their kids and their transition stories on TikTok and stuff like that, they're making money off this, right? This has been probably a gold mine for them, okay? Oh, my kids, you know, trans or whatever, let me make some money off of it. Let me promote it to the world. That's also another part of this. There's a whole lot of money be made off this stuff, man. It really is. I never thought that I would be known for this, like, as well as I am. But really, it's just a small part of who I am. He just brushes things off his shoulders. Like, it's fine. He moves on in his life, and he's just kind of think everything we've been through. He's just, like, learned to do that, and he's really good at it. I could never do that. The Whittingtons believe sharing their story could make a lasting difference in another child's life, something they learned from that support group father nearly a decade ago. I'm just
just here to make the ride smoother for others. You might be struggling right now, but we believe in you. This family, we might not know you, we might not know where you live, but you know, we understand you and we believe in you. What extraordinary courage displayed by Ryland, his sister Brindley, father Jeff, and mom Hillary. I want to thank the Whittington family for speaking to us. It's not easy, particularly at a time when, tra when transgender issues have been politicized. People are afraid of what they do not understand, Dana. This family hopes their story will lead to more understanding, more acceptance, and ultimately more... Yeah, so again, according to this guy, these transgender issues, it's been politicized, right? You've been political. If you speak out and say, hey, you know, I think this is wrong, you know, I think uh, trying to transition kids uh, at a young age before they understand this stuff, I, I think that's wrong. I think exposing kids to drag queens and stuff like that, that's wrong. Oh, no, no, you're just politicizing this, right? You don't understand. You're ignorant, right? Again, this is coming from Fox News. And Teji, you know, kind of exactly what some of these networks are on board with. But, hey, I guess you can make the argument that, you know, this is their family and this is what they want to do, which, hey, it is what it is. It ain't really none of my business. But it's hard for me to continue to mind my own business when you keep putting your business out here to the world and promoting it and trying to push it on other people. Because at that point, when you start to try to push your business on other people, then it does become my business, right? And I think that's what people got to understand. If you want me to mind my business and not say anything about this, okay, then stop promoting it to the world. Because when you do that, again, you're trying to influence people. Now it does become my business. And that's the problem. And so, again, guys, got Fox News out here just openly giving a full-throated endorsement to uh, transitioning kids for Pride Month. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.